computer organization and architecture memory plays a very vital role today's topic is memory organization and this is intended for engineering undergraduates of computer science and information technology we'll discuss the topic memory address map and memory connection to cpu what is memory address mapping the memory address assigned to each ram or rom chip is specified by a table called memory address map it is an illustrative representation of assigned addresses for each chip we may have more than one ram or rom chip in our system and which memory is assigned for each of the chips can be seen by memory address mapping for an example we assume that our computer system needs 512 bytes of ram and 512 bytes of rom but the ram capacity is of 128 bytes which means to have a total of 512 bytes of ram we need four ram chips since each ram chip is of 128 byte capacity and the rom chip is of 512 byte capacity so we need only one rom chip for this system according to the configuration of ram if we have a 128 cross 8 ram we need seven address lines so each ram chip will have seven address lines and our roms capacity is of 512 bytes 512 into cross 8 ram uh, sorry rom needs nine address lines so since it is the hexadecimal addresses and we know four bits are used to represent hexadecimal addresses according to our example we have four ram chips ram 1 2 3 and rom chip the address lines 1 to 7 are used for representing each of the ram chip this will represent the address of ram 1 ram 2 ram 3 and ram 4 and so on and we need nine address lines for rom so this will represent the address lines for rom bytes 8 and sorry bits 8 and 9 they together constitute of which ram we have to select if it is 0 and 0 we'll be selecting ram 1 if it is 0 and 1 ram 2 and so on. now the 10th bit that represents whether it is a ram chip or a rom chip so if it is 0 the rom uh, ram chip is selected and if it is 1 then the rom chip is selected so we are having the address hexadecimal address range from of four hexadecimal values so we need address bits from 1 to 16 to represent four hexadecimal address bits so 1 to 4 will represent the least significant bit and 11 uh, sorry 12 to 16 will represent the most significant bit most significant bit and the least significant bit so how are this found how we can find how can we can map that ram 1 will have the address range of 0000 to 007f now here we are having 1 to 16 bits for representing the hexadecimal address in four uh, bits but we are having only address lines which are showing 1 to 10 so 11 to 16 are unused bits and will always be 
zero. So for our address mapping, we write here 11 to 16 is always zero. Now, what will be changing in this address lines? We'll see first RAM 1. Now, this lower range and higher range, these are found by, you know, 11 to 16 is always 0. So, what will be changing? We insert all zeros in place 1 to 7. We get the minimum range and we insert all ones in 1 to 7 range and we get this higher range. So we get the boundaries 0000, 000 to 007F only by placing all zeros in this 7 bits and all ones in this 7 bits. So if it is all 0, you see 11 to 16 is always 0, 1 to 7 will also be 0. Then you get the lower range as 0000. Justifiable. And now, if we see 7, 7 bit will be from 5 to 8. If we see the maximum range will be 0, 1, 1, 1. So, if it is 0, 1, 1, 1, what will be the value? 7. And if it is 1, 1, 1, 1, what will be the value? F. So, like we have found the value for RAM chip 1, that is 0000 to 007F will be address range for RAM chip 1. Similarly, we can find range for RAM chip 2, 3, 4, and finally for RAM chip, uh, for the wrong chip, 10 bit is 1. Rest all, then the minimum range for this all will be what? 0. And for the maximum range put here, all ones and you can find this that it will be having 0 to 0, 0 to 0, 3 f f how will it be we will be having the values of the third bit from 9 to 12 so it will be it will be here 0 0 1 0 for the minimum range we are seeing. So, byte here is 1, 0 represents 2. So, we have here 2 and then rest all our zeros. Similarly, when we put here all 1s, what we get? We get here 1 in place of 0. So, you will be getting 3. And all 1s will lead to F and F. Hope this is clear. This way, the address mapping is done. So we are having a system where the hexadecimal address is assigned for each of the RAM and ROM chip through the memory address mapping. And the lines 8 and 9, they represented the four different RAM chips. If you need eight RAM chip, you will have a different uh, configuration. If you need 16 RAM chips, it will be different. So this is only a model which tells you how the address range differs. Now, when line 10 is 0, CPU selects the RAM. And since we have only ROM, one ROM, so when line 10 is 1, it selects the ROM. So this is the organization of the memory for 512 bytes of RAM and 512 bytes of the address space assignment to each memory chip is found and we can now justify the address range bits from 0000 to 007F. Address, another address range is 0080 to 00FF. We can find it by the address lines. Now, for this memory connection to CPU, we need that RAM and ROM chips are connected to the CPU through the address and the data buses. We know that the lower order lines in the address bus 
select the byte within the chips because they are the address lines and the other lines in the address bus select a particular chip 8 and 9 responsible for uh, finding which ram chip is involved and line 10 for finding if it is a ram or a rom so now it shows the memory connection to cpu we are seeing the cpu here in this whole box which is having the data bus and the address bus. now one to seven lines always for all the ram chips and the rom chips will consist of the address lines have ad7 seven address lines for ram chips and ad9 nine address lines for the rom chip now see here that eight and nine lines they are connected to a decoder two by four decoder eight and nine lines are connected to a two by four decoder and if the decoder value is zero it will be selecting ram chip one if the decoder value is one it will be selecting ram chip two and so on and on the basis of line 10 it is connected to the cs2 bar cs1 connection is to the decoder so it will select which ram chip it will be selected in the case of 8 and 9 will be going as address lines to the ROM chip and now CS2 bar means if CS1 is 1 and CS2 is 0 then only that chip will be selected read write lines are the signals for reading or writing from RAM or ROM chip read write lines are not present in the ROM chip because it is only used for reading and it does not need a signal if rom is activated it will read only read no write so this operation shows that read and write signals are for ram chip whether it wants to read or write from the ram now on the basis of that 11 to 16 you see here are unused and only thing you see something different here is are not in the 10 line coming from address bus in the 10th line coming from address bus when this rom will be activated when cs2 bar is 0 so when line 10 is 1 rom will be activated by putting a not gate to this line because when it is 1 not will make it 0 and when cs2 bar is 0 rom will be selected so in this way we are seeing a memory connection to cpu of a system where four ram chips and one rom chip is associated we could find out the memory address map and how each of the lines are used in the selection of RAM chip or the ROM chip. Since eight lines are used in the data bus, so eight lines will be used for reading or writing from the data bus.